What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Harv Video Audio Stuff and in this video we have my review, tutorial and demonstration of Motion VFX M Callout High Tech Animated Titles Plugin. I want to know what they are, how they work, what they're for and whether they're any good. Let's do it. Before we dive in, if you find this video helpful at all, if it saves you time, if it helps you get the shot, if it improves your workflow in any way, consider supporting this channel on Patreon. It's a non-profit thing, the idea being that any funds from the channel I put back into the channel, buy equipment, review it, and then I give it away to you guys afterwards. As you can imagine, buying and reviewing gear gets really expensive, so this is just a really elegant solution to improve my content, plus you get the chance to win some awesome gear. And speaking of winning, I actually have $15 of M credit to give away. Yep, that's credit you can use on the Motion VFX website. Many thanks to Motion VFX for donating this. It's not any kind of sponsorship at all. I just said, hey guys, how about, you know, giving me a little gift card for my backers? And they said, yep, okay. And for details for this, you can find my Patreon link below. So what is this plugin? Well, M Callouts High Tech is a pack of 30 4K ready tracks and animated titles for Final Cut that can very easily track objects. If you're interested, I have also reviewed M Callouts, M Callouts 2, M Callouts Tech and M Callouts Specs. They're all below, they all do different things and they're all fantastic, you should check them out, they're linked below. Anyway, now let me show you just how easy it is to track objects with this plugin. In Final Cut now, and I'm going to use the example that I showed you just at the beginning of this video, I've got two instances of M Callouts High Tech, both of which are tracking the lens. I'm just using the first and second presets you get in the pack. I'm going to start by just dragging them on top of the clip. Then I'm going to get them in position and just trim them down to the right length. I'm just going to disable one of them so we can work on them one by one. And as you can see, we have this box here, and this is the tracking box. M Callouts will use whatever information is inside this box to gather the tracking information. As you can see, you can change the size of this box, which is just really handy for tracking almost anything. I can make the box big to encompass most of the lens, and that will work, but for something like this, which is largely cylindrical, you have to factor in that there's going to be some rotation. So in this case, I'm going to make the box smaller and then target this little spot, and that way my tracking data will follow the rotation of the lens. All we need to do then is just hit the track button and the plugin will do the rest. Depending on the length of the clip, it does take some time, so I've sped this up for you. So that's the first one. I'm going to do exactly the same step with the second one, but in this case, I'm going to target the top rim of the lens. Again, I've sped it up because assuming you don't want to watch a progress bar do its thing, how awkward would that be? Just me not saying anything watching a progress bar. And that's it, everything's tracked. All we've got left to do is just position our callouts and you end up with this, pretty good looking. Okay, moving on. The tracking is so good and that's just because it's powered by the Mocha engine, which is the same engine used for the tracking in Premiere Pro. Now I know that Final Cut now at long last has tracking functionality, and to be honest, I still prefer this kind of plugin because it gives you everything in one. It gives you the tracking, the style, the animation all in one. It's just so fast and accurate and the more you practice with the tracking tips that I just showed you, the easier it becomes and it doesn't take long. Next, I want to talk about user interface and UI is something that with these kind of plugins, it's really important to get right and it, it kind of winds me up and I, I find I really care when it's not right. It kind of bugs me when you have a plugin with huge potential and then a user interface that, that doesn't quite deliver. Fortunately, that's not the case with this bundle. The only slightly odd thing is that as all the presets have different behaviors and components, the UI options can change from preset to preset, but you quickly get used to it. Let me give you a little tour of the UI now. So I've just dragged on the very first preset from the pack and into the inspector and into the text tab. As I mentioned, there are varying styles of user interface, but this is a fairly typical one. Firstly, we've got the ability to disable or enable the build in or build out function. And that's just the animation for when the preset appears and disappears. This is so useful. Often I'll disable the build out function if I'm using this on a short clip. Moving on now, and we have the option to change the horizontal flip of the preset. Of course, we've got various position and scale options. You can disable the title, I suppose, if you wanted to use just the symbols and animation of a preset. Obviously, all of the text is editable, so just put whatever. And you also have lots of different options when it comes to fonts, colors, tracking, all of that kind of stuff. It just means you can basically start with the preset and end up with something completely different if you wanted it to be. 
This particular preset has, as you can see, a plus and minus sign. These are completely editable. You can get rid of them. You can make them a different color. You can get rid of just one of them if you want to. The point is, it's really tweakable. And the same thing goes for any of the other lines, details, and the track spot. The takeaway from this, of course, is that as long as you like the basis of a preset, you can make it whatever you want it to be. And I love that. A really nice addition to some of the presets is the addition of what they call drop zones, which basically unlock another layer of customization. And let me show you these now. They're, they're pretty awesome. Back in Final Cut, and I selected one of the drop zone presets and I've gone ahead and I've done the tracking already and looking at the inspector you can immediately see the difference you've got a whole load of drop zone options the main thing I want to show you is just where it says drop zone no source click that box just to the right hand side of it and then for this example I've selected a video clip a sort of similar looking video clip and it's going to select an image from kind of the middle of the clip. Once I'd scaled it down, it looked pretty good. But why would you want to use this? I hear you ask. Well, that's kind of up to you, but the way that I like to use drop zones is to add something like a logo. So that's what I'm going to do. This is a Sigma lens, so I'm going to add the Sigma logo. And as you can see, I've got the Sigma logo dropped into my timeline. You don't need it there. You can just have it in your library. I've only put it there just so you can see it. And I've got the same process as before. Choose it as the drop zone item, scale it to taste, and it's done. For a long time now, I've been using the M Callouts presets as my lower thirds. In fact, there's probably one here right now. And for this video, I've used a variety from the high tech pack just to kind of demonstrate a few more of them for you. I know this is not their intended use, but if you just position them right and then make a few tweaks, they work brilliantly. Let me show you now. So I've dropped in the preset that I used just a moment ago, and this is what it looks like when you first drop it into your timeline. You can see there's a link line, the track spot, and the tracking box. Of course, we don't want to do any tracking for this example. And the first thing I want to do is just drag the whole thing to the position I want it to be. Switching over to the version that I prepared earlier, and you can see I've only made a few changes. Of course, the call out scale. I've changed the text. I've left all the detail of the preset as is because I like the character of it. And lastly, I've got rid of all of the link lines and track spot. To get rid of these, I've just dialed down the opacity. And that's it. This works for almost all of the presets. So there you go, really cool animated lower thirds. Another way that I like to use these callouts is actually to make thumbnails for my videos. And of course, the one for this video was designed with the high tech pack. And actually, I've done the same thing with all of the previous reviews of the M callouts videos. Let me show you. So all I did for this one was take a photo with different tech items in it. I chose a preset to be my main title and then I got rid of any link lines. And then I just went around and dotted other presets to label the tech items in the photo. Take a screenshot and we're done. It's definitely more minimalistic than previous ones that I've done, but I like it. Now for the pros and cons, and I'll start with the pros because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. So starting with the pros and subjectively, I find these super high quality. Make of that what you will, it's just my opinion. I'm basically just saying that I like them. The tracking is absolutely spot on as it is with all of the M Callouts plugins and that's just down to the very good Mocha engine. I love the style of these. I just find they look so classy in a kind of sci-fi futuristic kind of way, but I'm a bit of a nerd, so I, I really like that. I love that they haven't skimped on the presets. You get 30. Trust me, that's loads, plus they are really customizable. I'll demonstrate that in just a minute. I love the way these are animated. They're just so slick, for want of a better word. The addition of drop zone presets is really amazing. It just adds another layer of customization. I find with all of the M Call Arts plugins, they have versatility that I just didn't expect. Other than the intended use, I use them for lower thirds, thumbnails, even titles. You just know that this is the kind of thing that if you're doing something fairly specialized for a client and this is the style they want, that you know they're gonna love it. And then the cons, and firstly, this can be a little processor hungry if you layer them up, but that's kind of the case with a lot of plugins of this type. I would say they're not inexpensive, but you do get what you pay for. The tracking takes a little bit of practice when you first get the product. However, it really doesn't take long to get used to it. The UI layout changes from preset to preset. It's not a huge deal and they do change in kind of a logical way. Just something to be aware of. Finally, to my opinion, and well, it, it's a really cool pack of presets and whilst the quality is just undeniable and they're very slick and that kind of thing, and I'm definitely going to use some of the presets, I would say on the whole, 
then they're less to my style than some of the other M Callouts packs. I'd say these are going to work really well with any kind of tech related videos, anything uh, car related or gadgets or sci-fi. In fact, I would actually recommend this pack for those kind of videos over the M Callouts tech pack, which I reviewed previously. I love the look of them and the way they've been so beautifully animated is very pleasing. The clean lines, the minimalistic feel, the thin line typeface, there's just a very lovely quality to these callouts. They're also very tweakable and I'm a big fan of plugins that are tweakable. In fact, it annoys me when you have plugins that, that don't allow you to adjust all the parameters. So definitely not a problem with these ones. They've got lots that you can tweak. I'd say as long as you start with a preset that you like, you'll be okay. And here's an example now. These three callouts are actually all the same preset. I've just messed around with them a bit change the colour schemes and layout so they look a bit different. So for me, I prefer the M Callouts, M Callouts 2 and M Callouts spec packs. They're not better, they're just better for me. That's all. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. I want to hear from you. Are there any other Motion VFX plugins that I just have to check out and haven't yet? Because to be honest, I've been blown away by them so far and I want to check out more and review more and... Um, they're fun. They're just really high quality. So let me know in the comment section. Thanks. I've now made hundreds of videos about videography and audio on this channel, for which YouTube has chosen this video for you next, and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. Mm -hmm.